Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. First of all, I want to thank everyone for the support. I just recently got over 500 subscribers and it truly means a lot. Thank you. Today I'm delivering the first video of a collection I've decided to make. I pondered a lot about making a series for a long time, but I finally decided on a topic. I'll be making some Sailor Moon dolls. I love that series and it has been a part of my childhood, so it's my way to honor it. Today, I'll start with my Sailor Moon doll, which is actually a Princess Serenity doll. Though I'll be making her and all other dolls in the series with a twist. They're all going to have a dark god makeover. So today, it's a dark romantic take on Serenity. At first, I wanted to do maybe a very punk goth version of a casual Usagi, but while talking with my friends from Dolly Mixtures, who recently did a gorgeous Usagi doll, I decided to go for the princess version. For it, I used the second-hand Draculaura doll that I see in better days. It's quite hard to see on camera there, but she has some bad staining I can't even get off with sandpaper. It's on one of her arms and on the inside of her hip joint mainly. I started by removing her hair, which was greasy at the roots, with sharp scissors. Then I go ahead with various pliers and a flat screwdriver to scrape the hair from the inside of the head before pulling it out. This time, the glue inside was particularly tough, so I got the head into boiling water, which softened it quite a bit. Usually I use a hair dryer, but the water can make the job a whole lot easier. I saw some doll artists calling the process satisfying, but me, I actually find it painful since I have chronic pain in the ends. I think it's worth it though to take the long route and preserve the holes, because I usually prefer rooting my dolls. Her face and factory paint on her scalp was easily removed with some nail polish remover that has high content of acetone inside. Then I painted the scalp a bone yellow color in preparation for rerouting. For her hair now, I use yarn. I cut pieces of about 20 cm and I unraveled them. Then I fold them in half and rerouted them one piece at a time. I did not plug all the holes because yarn is quite thick. With Usagi's hairstyle, 
I needed the perimeter and a clean part over all the head, so this is where I added the yarn. I secured the hair inside of the head with some tacky glue, and when it was fully dry, I started carefully brushing out the yarn. It would be flat iron after, transforming it into silky and shiny fibers. Brushing yarn is always something. Losing a ton of thickness into a blob of fluff is completely normal. You can save that on the side if you want, as you could use it as stuffing or to make yarn flocking. At this stage, her hair looks wild, but it does tone down with the ironing. After doing it off camera, I went in and started separating her hair to secure the ponytails and isolate her bangs. Then it's on to hair burrito. I pinned an old piece of fabric around her hair to protect it from the ceiling and started the face. I always give the doll's faces two or three layers of Mr. Super Clear UV flat before starting, and I roughly sketch her features before starting with the pastels. Like usual, I try to mix warm and cool tones in the skin to give it a more vibrant and dynamic mix of colors. I start with contouring blush and natural shadows, usually in the first layers, but I also can use pastels to lay base colors of eye makeup, lips, and even irises sometimes. I do a lot of chaotic back and forth, so to speak. I also start laying down the eyes white in early, because this often needs a bit of build-up and I want to repeat it on as much layers as possible. After the base blushing is done, I start going in with watercolor pencils. I lay down the base colors first, but I refrain from using darker, more unforgiven pigments, like black, until the very end. It's way easier to go darker than lighter. You can still do it with strong pigments, but I prefer not counting on it. And I take my time to build gradients. I also like to mix colors a bit in the eyes. Usagi here has blue eyes, but I use a tiny bit of purple for the shadows and a speck of green on the highlight. I could have used even yellow for it. I also usually use a brown to do some shadows on the eyes, on the eye white, as it registered to me as a more natural way than going for black, more natural shadows. I do it with pencils, but pastels is also a good alternative, and it gives very good results. I do not personally use a lot of paint in my face-ups because I find that pencils gives me more control, but that's what I personally prefer. Any way that works for you is good. I 
I use the brand Arteza for my watercolor pencils, except for the white I use in the eyes. This one is from Derwent. I want my Segi to have black lips and dark smoky eye makeup, because why not? At this stage, I was not settled on the type of brows either, wondering if I should go for a stylish black line often seen in goth makeup, or a more soft and natural one, which can work with a more goth romantic aesthetic too. Though not having the brows in the way at this stage made me have some more room to expand on the eye makeup, so I used that. I finally settled on a more natural style of eyebrows. I simply drew them with a blonde color and used brown to darken the tails a bit, making gradient. I added hairs and texture while working on details and deepening other, deepening other colors. I work on everything at the same time, really. I know it's a bit confusing to watch, but that's how I do it. I'm adding a layer of sealant when I feel the colors aren't building up anymore, and I can go back with pastels too. It's really about how I feel. The last step here, and it was my first time doing it on a doll, was adding some shimmer to her face. I used makeup highlighter to be more precise, and I layered it three times with sealant. The last step is paint, and I think it's what ties everything together. I used a tiny nail art brush and watered down acrylics and I added textures and highlights in the eyes and on the brows. I then switched to black paint and I passed over the lash line to make it really really dark. I also did her lips in solid black. I finished it with a silver moon painted on her foreheads, tiny jewels on her eyes and gloss on her lips. I also added a bit of white between the lips to give her a parted lips look. Now for the body. I had modifications in mind and the first one involved a tiny waist to give her a corseted look. So I used a small hand saw to remove a section of her upper body. I would usually use a large jewelry wire to connect the pieces back, but I ran out of that and stores are closed because of you know what, so I use aluminum foil and hot glue instead. Since I'll be using a spoxy sculpt on top, this should hold.
I molded her that tiny waist I wanted and decided she needed to be curvier, so I'll be adding somebody to her hips, thighs, buttocks and of course her bust. I use a bit of water to smooth the putty out as much as I can before letting it cure for 24 hours. If you think your breasts look a bit weird, that's because I want them to look like they are being furiously pushed up by the corset she'll be wearing. Now that it's fully cured, it's time to sun the heck out of it wearing a protective mask. Now on to make her gown. I'm not a seamstress and I wing things on the go most of the time, so I apologize if I do not do things in the most efficient way, but that's how I did it. So here, I cut off a circular shape of white fabric to give me a base for the dress. I'll be using some gorgeous embroidered tool and I want to gather it around her waist. I sewed it upside down to give it some more volume if I may say it like this. I wanted to make it as poofy as possible and her curves are meant to emphasize that. I finished everything with a back seam and a snap. For the top, which is like a bustier or a corset, I'm using a method that I love and that means using fun foam as a base. The idea is to lightly heat the foam with a tea light candle and then when it gets warm, press it against the doll's body as snug as you want it to be to mold all the shape and curves. It takes a few easing but it's really easy and you do not need a lot of heat at all. Be careful though because it is still an open flame. I cut it to the size I wanted, then painted it black and covered it with matte mod podge. The result is like a nice faux fake leather kind of thing and I find it very handy to use in garments. Here I'm looking at my gems, beads, laces, wondering how I can decorate that top and give it a design reminiscent of Serenity's dress. I settled on a band of lace first and I sewed it through the foam. Unless you poke endless holes into it, it holds the sewing process very efficiently. My camera died on me, but here's what I have done. I've added some half pearls on the top of the bustier, securing them with super glue. Then I poked holes on the side to be able to lace the corset later on, and I had the drum prints around them to make it a bit stronger and visually more appealing. I then added more beads to the top, using those tiny cylinder shapes here and there around the pearls to create texture. Everything is super glued.
I finish with alternating rows of diamonds and slightly bigger cylinder shapes to another piece of the same lace. I cover the whole thing and it's surprisingly sturdy. Being happy with how it looks together with the skirt, I sewed the bodice on the waistband I made as a base for the skirt, making it a single piece dress. I wanted to add the bow she has on her back and make it black. The only ribbon I had on hand though was brown, so I decided to still use it. I give it shape by folding it and ironing it to make the tail skinners on the top, and I use a lighter to seal the ends of course. After, I painted it black. I glued a little diamond, then, then I sewed it on the back of the dress, right on top of the snap I used for the skirt, hiding it efficiently. I also made her a black underskirt off-camera, a tube-shaped skirt, because the tool I use for the dress is pretty see-through. As for her shoes, I repainted those I had with a lot. I have no idea whose those they were, but I think they look nice. While I am doing this, I wanted to ask you folks something. My latest videos has been way longer than what I used to post online. I'm showing more process too and I wanted to know if you prefer longer videos like this one or if you'd prefer me to trim them down more and end up with something between 10 to 15 or maybe 20 minutes maximum. I could film step-by-step -step tutorials on faces for example on the side and keep it short on repaints or do you like it better the way it is now? Let me know in the comments please. While I'm at it, who's your favorite Sailor Moon character? Let me know too. Now, with the dress out of the way, I decided she needed gloves. This isn't exactly the best fabric for it, but it did the job for now. I sewed them on the arms directly for a tight fit, then I turned them inside out. I did not hem them, but I did add a bit of fray check to be sure on the ends. I painted her hands black later after to complete the illusion. I sewed some of those tiny paper roses on her gloves as a way to imitate the poofy ornament Serenity has on her arms. The original design doesn't have gloves, but I wanted some on my doll and it would have the stains pretty well. Alright, now with the clothes fitting out of the way, I can work on her body. I started by covering the epoxy with paint, color matching the doll's original color. I use a mix of watered-down acrylics for it, and it's very important to thin it out if you want to avoid any manners of streaks or texture. I painted many layers of it to make it more opaque, while being wary of bubbles. I think it took her about 5 or 6 layers. Once dry, I covered it with a layer of Mod Podge to protect it. It looks a bit shiny, but it can be dulled with a coat of MSC. I did spray her, because I blushed her shoulders and cleavage off camera, since it was going to be exposed. Once done, I laced her in her dress really tightly. All that's left now is to work on her hair, and this was a little awkward to film, but I'm showing it the best I could. After removing the hair burrito, the first thing I did was to strengthen her hair again because the yarn can crease and it takes shape very easily.
I wanted to elongate her twin tails. Yarn can only go as long as it can without breaking, so I made her hair extensions by rolling whiffs of yarn hair and gluing them in the twin tails to lengthen and thicken them a little bit. I learned this by watching Exchange's video. He's a master of yarn hair, really, and his My Little Pony series has taught me a lot about wig making. When it was finally long enough for my taste, I started curling her hair. I don't have metal chopsticks, so I use a screwdriver. I placed it in my hair straightener to eat it, and it does a wonderful job. took forever, but she's curled. I've added rows of white pearls around her buns and some little roses too. The last thing I wanted to do for her was a tiny crown. I fashioned it using Warblow last minute. I might have used jewelry wire, but like I said earlier, I recently ran out. I glued a piece behind it to be able to put it and remove it from the doll at will. And that folk completed this project. Now folk, there are one last thing I want to ask you. Who should I do next? I want to do the inner senshi first, the man girls. So let me know who's your fav and who you want to see next among Mercury, Mars, Jupiter or Venus. I will do a black lady too, don't worry. I hope you liked my princess serenity. Thank you for stopping by and watching this video. I'll see you on the next one. Stay safe.